today's video, we're going to be analyzing the first round game of the Grand K Chess Open. You've been following the Journey Towards Champion. We've played one tournament uh, in Jerba so far. We also played in Tata Steel, but I wasn't, you know, the, the series hadn't started yet. However, this is the second event, uh, which is an open tournament in Grand K with over 3,700 players, an absolutely massive hall. In my section, there's a thousand players. And there's a first prize of 20,000 dollars, 20,000 euros that I'm fighting for. And the winner qualifies to, to the invitational event, which is super, super strong. So it's very, very valuable to win this event. I started out with this tournament with the black pieces against uh, Sebastian Rahm, a player rated 21-26. Uh, let's see how the game went. He started out with E4. In mind, this was the first game. The pairings went out only maybe 30 minutes. You know, before the start of the game, the game started a bit late. So I didn't have much time to prepare. I played the Nairov. Uh, the last his last game in the Nidorf was with Bishop B3, but it was in 2016, so I was sort of not really sure what he was going to play, but usually low-rated players will default to what they know, and he played this in 2016, so he repeated this line. Uh, he went Queen D2, Castles, Bishop B7. Now, he had played all of this before, and he usually played F4, and he had two games here, but instead he tried, tried to go F3, tried to play G4. These are all sort of normal developing moves in the Nidorf. Uh, now I go h5, stopping g4, and now he decides to go f4. So I wasn't really sure what to do now, because obviously I remembered that in, in this position, h4 is the best move, and obviously you're threatening to take. You know, after the queen takes, you take with a pawn. If the queen recaptures, you're going to pin the queen to the king. And usually they go g g3 to sort of protect this, and I have a little bit of preparation here, very, very quick and brief. So obviously having the extra move h5 in the game, I wasn't really sure if it was good or bad, because I thought that having the pawn in h5 could be sort of a weakness that would, my opponent could use to attack my king once I've castled. Um, so that's why I decided to keep my king in the center um, and play the move b5. And the point behind b5 is, of course, you have b4 as an idea, but also you're sort of not making a committal decision I want him to make, you know, to, to show what he's going to do. I want, maybe if he closes he close the center with f5, then my king is you know, sort of fine at the center, and I can delay castling and continue with my um, initiative. So he plays bishop b2, I go rook c8, king b1, queen c7, putting the rook in the open file, putting the queen here. He goes f5, bishop c4, he goes a3. And uh, here, uh, I decided to play knight b6. Uh, I wanted to go knight to a4, and uh, apparently the computer suggests rook b8, very simply just going a5, b4, and uh, the king is, is, is quite weak. Um, my point behind knight b6 was that first of all, if bishop g5, there's some nice lines. So I play knight a4. Uh, you can't take because knight takes e4. I'm, you know, taking this piece and everything sort of collapses. Of course, if you take, I can take. And knight takes e4 is one option. Um, I could also play queen takes e4. Um, but I thought the critical move is bishop takes f6 because if bishop takes f6. Now you can sort of trade everything, and like if you take here, the knight can come to this outpost. Um, but here I have the intermediate move, knight takes c3. Obviously you don't want to play pawn takes, doubling your pawns, so you play queen takes, and now instead of taking by the bishop, I take here. And uh, the point is, is that, uh, let's say, okay, you trade the queens. Now uh, I'm sort of attacking, uh, now I guess he has rook d2, so I, I think I miscalculated, yeah, I actually just completely miscalculated. What I thought during the game, uh, I just didn't realize that rook d2 or rook e1. I'm probably maybe slightly better here for something like this, or h4. But yeah, that was stupid. I, I think I should have an alternative. Let's see what the answer says. Yeah. Ah, okay, wow. So this was actually a big mistake for me. Yeah. I miscalculated here. So this is why knight b6 was a mistake. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I should have just played rook, rook b8. Um, but he didn't punish. He went bishop f3. I went castles. It's funny that now... The engine thinks the best move is to play knight back to bd7, which is, I think is just ridiculous, but you can't really trust this chess.com engine. Now I'm, I castle my king, I'm ready to get some counterplay. Um, my opponent here lashes out with g4. Uh, I guess what they were afraid of was if they go h3, I go rook g8, g4, now d5. And now I'm sort of breaking, everything's sort of collapsing. Uh, let's see if you take, now I can take, take, and this queen, I've got this, my rooks and everything. I've got a really great initiative. And some real tactics, you know, you know, skewers with the queen. No, like discovered attacks, perhaps. And let's say you try to take uh, and take here. Um, sort of winning the pawn, I can go b4. You have to take back and takes. And now I've got like 
my two bishops, and I'm down a pawn, but all my pieces are sort of perfectly placed. And you can try to take, 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 uh, but now I have e4, and then I'm going to pick up the d5 pawn, and I've, again, got a great initiative. So my opponent just lashes out of d4. Um, obviously, you think, why are you giving a pawn? He wants to get retreat. And the point is, is that he's hoping to take in here and have some counterplay. But I don't have to take immediately. I can play knight a4 first, which is what I played. Uh, the point being that if bishop takes g4, I have multiple options, but the cleanest is bishop takes b3. Pawn, bishop take, take. Now, you don't really want to play here because of knight takes e4. And then I'm attacking the queen, and then I'm going to, you know, fork the king and the rook. So you play queen takes, I can take, take. Okay, I can play knight takes e4, but then maybe f6. So I just play rook takes e3. I win a pawn, I'm attacking the bishop and the pawn, so I'm taking a second pawn. And I take a second pawn, the king's going to be weak. e4 pawn's also weak, so this would be very easily winning. So now, you know, you can't really take, you're sort of in some trouble. My opponent plays knight to d5. I take the knight, and now I just take, I take the Take the bishop. Uh, my opponent here plays this insane move, bishop c5. The point is that if you go bishop h6, I have knight e4. Okay, you can take this, I just sidestep. Now, I'm the queen has to stay tied to the c2 pawn. So, but now I play knight f2. Okay, the queen can't take because this is just me. So then, okay, the queen must go back and I just take the rook. And I'm just up basically a rook and a knight. This, even in the worst case, I can sack a rook to, to to trade the queens i guess one critical line is let's say knight f2 here here knight takes d1 let's say bishop takes g7 here i play queen takes c2 queen takes c2 rook c2 and okay bishop takes f8 i have rook g2 blocking okay there are many wins and let's say you take back i just take here up so so many so much material i have pawn that's good to queen and if you take now i give a check let's say the king goes up and i go f2 and now this pawn is just going to queen. So I'm up way too much material. So that's why he went for bishop c5. Uh, hoping that if takes, I guess, I wonder if this, if I'm losing here. Ah, uh, okay, here I guess I have knight g4 as the only move to defend. Takes king fc, and, I, and I'm holding. But here, if I, for example, the king h7, queen g5, I'm just made it. Um, he's threatening queen g7 and queen h4. And you can't stop both of those mates. So, uh, I prefer just to play knight e4, uh, the point being that after queen h6, I go knight g5, attacking the queen, if the queen goes back, I just take the piece, so you have to take, I take back, and now I go f6, just shutting things down, no, g7 is protected, and then now I take the bishop, and I'm just up a full rook, and material, and, you know, in compensation, so he goes rook g7, f6, bishop f6, here, I just sidestep, again, I have all this material, he tries to attack, you know, I could be greedy and take more pieces, but I just go rook g8, rook g6, bringing in final defender. Again, this all those pieces are hanging. And uh, after this, uh, he makes a couple moves, but he resigned shortly after. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know. We got a nice camera. I made sure to bring the camera that I set up with me. Um, there's also live commentary on my games, all of my games. We're going to double around tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m. Central European time. The second game at 3 p.m. Central European time. Live commentary on my Twitch channel. And there are cameras on my board. Um, I would just have to try to find a way for my commentary team to get access to that. But there are cameras. Obviously, that would be very interesting for you guys to watch. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, hopefully the tournament goes well. And uh, thank you guys for you know watching the journey. You know We're going from theory to practice now.